All right, let's go ahead and get started. Hello everyone and welcome to our UC Berkeley engineering visit for today. My name is Celine. I use the she, her, hers pronoun series and I am a fourth year here at Cal. I'm studying sociology and cognitive science. So excited to welcome you all here today. We have our wonderful tour givers who are going to give you a nice comprehensive overview of engineering at UC Berkeley. So before we get started, a little bit of housekeeping. So this will be a 40 to 45 minute presentation first. Feel free to type any questions in the Q&A that you have below. Uh, the polls will also be launched throughout the entire presentation. Please make sure to answer those so that we know who is here today and how we can gear our tour more towards you. Uh, don't worry if you miss any part of this presentation for any reason, there is a different recorded version on our website. And just a reminder, this is an engineering tour, meaning it is geared more towards engineering topics. We do have a regular virtual visit that you can access at visit.berkeley.edu if you have any questions about our regular content. This is also fully in the student perspective, which means that there is no admissions or financial aid information. But if you have any questions about those, we will gladly direct you to their offices. And finally, we will be ending with a Q&A with our wonderful tour givers, and we'll do our best to answer any and all questions that you may have. So please feel free to type them in the Q&A below. But with that, I will go ahead and uh, let Christina and Ryan take it away. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our engineering virtual visit. My name is Christina. I use the she, her, hers pronoun series. Um, I'm originally and currently in Whittier, California, which is in Southern California. I'm a third year here at UC Berkeley. Um, and I am in the College of Engineering. I study industrial engineering and operations research. Um, I'm also part of some student orgs on campus um, and do a lot more than giving tours to you guys today. So I'm in the UC Rally Committee, which is one of our spirit groups on campus, um, Hispanics in Engineering and Science and Society of Women Engineers, um, which are two um, groups for marginalized groups on campus um, or in the engineering world. And then also Haas Bebe, which is um, a group for high school students interested in business run by um, our graduate school of business. And I'll um, leave it off to Ryan. All right, hi everyone. Welcome to the University of California, Berkeley. My name is Ryan. I use the He series and I'm from Mission Viejo, California, which is right in between San Diego and Los Angeles. So I'm from Southern California. I also am a junior here at Cal and my major is public health. So public health is not in the College of Engineering, but I do know a good amount, a good amount about the College of Engineering, so that is why I'm giving this tour. And some involvement I'm in, that I'm a part of here on campus, I'm part of Suitcase Clinic, which helps, which helps out with undeserved populations here, on, here in the Berkeley area. I'm part of a pre-health fraternity, and I also am a part of a few uh, URAP projects, which are research projects uh, here on campus as well. Thank you so much, Ryan, for that introduction. Um, and first, we'd like to pull up a poll on screen, so if you could answer that. Um, just asking what type of person you are viewing or tour, whether you're in high school, you're a parent, um, counselor, transfer student, just to give us a better, better perspective. Um, so yeah, we're welcome you, welcoming you to our school virtually. So we wanted to show you a couple pictures of what our campus looks like on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so on the left-hand side in the upper, um, upper left-hand corner, you can see California Memorial Stadium with our football team there. Um, we're sad that football didn't start in um, August just because of the pandemic, but we are looking, Pac-12 is returning hopefully to football um, later this fall, as well as winter sports. So we're excited to um, ha be able to at least through our laptop screens or through our TVs, um, be able to cheer on our Golden Bears. In the center, you see our Campanile, which is our clock and bell tower that stands at the center of campus um, and is really a historical landmark of campus. It's the third, ta third tallest freestanding clock and bell tower. So you can see it from literally like anywhere around the Bay Area. It really stands out and is an iconic part of Berkeley. On the right hand side, you can see some of our students hanging out on Memorial Glade, um, which is in another part of campus. You can see your Campanile in the background as well. Um, and you can also see the inside of one of our engineering um, buildings on campus that we'll talk about later on. But yeah, a lot of beautiful buildings around campus, a lot of great celebrations as well. We're celebrating 150 years of women. So we're excited to welcome you onto our campus. Um, and yeah, we'll get started with the tour. Oh, and to go over what we're going to talk about in the tour, um, here are a few topics that we're going to go over. We're going to briefly go over, um, over the campus 
its history, its legacy, all of that. Then we're going to go straight into the academics and talk about specifically the College of Engineering, but also touch upon other opportunities in other colleges, um, student life and resources, labs, maker spaces, kind of the extracurricular stuff that students do outside the classroom, and then ending off with what the College of Engineering and Berkeley um, like has done in its legacy. So yeah, it is a very engineering um, kind of geared tour. So if you want to learn more about our entire campus, housing, other resources, would highly encourage you um, also on um, visit.berkeley.edu to check out our general campus tour, which gives um, a much more like broader kind of description of campus rather than engineering based. All right, sweet, thanks Christina. So just for a little bit of an overview of the Berkeley in general, uh, so about our history and establishment, we were founded in 1868. So quite a while ago, actually two years ago, we celebrated our 150th year anniversary, which is pretty crazy to me. Um, so, and we do by go, we do go by a few names here on campus. Uh, we go by UC Berkeley, Cal, and the University of California. So we actually get to claim the name University of California because we are the first uh, UC school of the UC system. I'm sure you know about the other UC schools, but we were the, actually the first, so we get to claim the name University of California. And like I said, we're the first of the nine under, undergraduate UC schools. Our mascot is the Golden Bear, and you also is a cute little guy named Oski that you'll see walking around campus. And for our campus size, we are a pretty big campus, so there are 31,348 undergraduates. And of that, there are 3,746 engineers. So. The engineers don't make up the majority of the population, but there definitely are a good amount of uh, engineers on campus. And of that, there's also 11,856 graduates with 2,397 engineers. So those are just some numbers thrown at you, but there definitely is a big campus uh, here in Berkeley. But so that means there's just always something going on. Yeah, so um, Ryan talked a little bit about what percentage of students make up the College of Engineering, uh, but I wanted to highlight what the rest of our students are involved in, what colleges they're in. So um, UC Berkeley is a large university that is comprised of five undergraduate colleges and nine graduate schools. Um, so our five undergraduate colleges are the College of Engineering, which has a total of 11 majors that will go in um, into in just a bit. Uh, College of Chemistry has three majors inside of it, which include chemical engineering, the only engineering major outside of the College of Engineering. And then we also have our College of Letters and Science um, with over 85 majors and minors. It is by far our largest college, um, college school on campus. Um, it is um, comprised of 75% of our undergraduate population. Browser College of Natural Resources and Environmental Design are two of our smaller colleges um, for those students that want to go into like environmental, like sustainability, or want to go into architecture, those sort of like tracks. Um, but yeah, we're going to be talking about engineering and chemistry, but just to let you know, we have five undergraduate colleges, so um, there is much more than we're going to talk about today. And of course, um, feel free to ask um, questions in the Q&A, but also um, there is a general campus visit that you can find more info on all of these five undergraduate colleges. Um, and as always, we encourage all students to apply directly into the college they're interested in. So if you're interested in engineering, if you're interested in chemistry, especially, we um, encourage you to apply directly just because it does involve a process and it does involve a lot of work to transfer. Even once you are at Berkeley to transfer between colleges, just because every college is like so it's so different in what they study um prerequisite courses and all that so yeah just wanted to emphasize that all righty just to give a brief overview of the college of engineering specifically so a little bit of an overview it the mission statement is to transform the lives of our students by preparing them to become successful leaders and innovators for positive change which really shows that we're just beyond just like studying these like crazy engineering books and all that, um, but they really are preparing students for like the workforce after and to be like change makers. Um, another mission statement that is part of the College of Engineering is to expand knowledge and create transformative technology through original research to tackle the world's biggest challenges. It's another really ambitious statement that really captures uh, the College of Engineering itself. Um, I personally am not an engineer, but I have experience with many, many engineers. Lots of my friends are engineers, so I really do believe that these statements do hold true. 
Um, like I said, the culture in the College of Engineering really is focused on change makers, challenging the status quo, entrepreneurship, research and innovation. I know tons of my friends are really involved in research and just so many different extracurriculars because Berkeley really does offer that many and we're going to go into all the extracurriculars that you can uh, and be involved in as part as an engineer here. And another big thing is community. So um, a lot of engineers are really compassionate, are passionate and really passionate about social justice. Um, they have lots of spirit and pride and we really do pride ourselves on our diversity and excellence. So this just gives a little brief overview of the College of Engineering. I know it was kind of a lot, kind of broad, but it really does show the passion and like creativity that the College of Engineering really embodies. Yeah, I think those words and that statement kind of covers the entire like UC Berkeley community, but yeah, especially College of Engineering. Um, so yeah, now we're going to go directly into our majors and kind of the topics we cover in this college. So if you wouldn't mind filling out the poll, um, we're just asking you guys what type of engineering you're interested in. Um, just so when we go over the majors, we kind of know which ones to focus on. So we have a total of 11 majors in the College of Engineering. You can see to the right hand side, there's a pie chart that kind of shows where students lie within the College of Engineering. So um, kind of similar to the poll, a lot of students are interested in our electrical engineering computer science program. Um, it is one of the top ranked in the world and really um, a great program on campus. Um, I also see that there is some mechanical engineering students in um, the virtual visit. So mechanical engineering is our second most popular major on um, in the College of Engineering, uh, taking up almost 20% of um, COE's population. And then there's bioengineering. And then after that, um, you get engineering majors that are a lot smaller and a lot closer knit. So um, for myself, I'm in the Industrial Engineering and Operations Research Department. So that's only 5% of the college overall and the college having about 3,000 students. So I started out in the undeclared path, which is 2.6% of students. It was like 100 of us in the department. Um, but yeah, there are very, very small majors and niche majors within the college, but also we offer those majors that a lot of students are interested in, such as mechanical engineering um, and electrical engineering and computer science. All of our majors are ranked in the top nine globally, um, and our school overall is the third ranked engineering school in the entire world. So something we're really proud of um, to be able to offer great education to all of our students. Um, switching majors, similar to um, when we talked about college, it's always better to apply directly into the major that you're interested in. We do have an undeclared engineering pathway that we'll talk more about in case you really aren't sure what engineering you wanna do, but it's always better to directly apply to whatever engineering you want to do, just because it is never guaranteed that you'll be able to easily switch through majors. There's a lot of prereq requirements. Sometimes there's GPA requirements. Um, and it's just much easier if you just apply directly into the major you want to pursue. Um, after graduating from one of these 11 majors, um, our students in the College of Engineering either go into industry, get a job right after graduating, or a couple semesters after graduating. Um, then a lot of them do go to grad school. So whether they want to pursue a master's to, you know, kind of hide in their resume and get better jobs after graduating, or they want to do research and get that PhD. Um, a lot of our students in the engineering science department are very research based. So they go into grad school as well. Um, and yeah, so that's another bullet point undergrad school research. So even if they don't do research through grad school, many students um, will go to like a biotech firm and do research for them and do that sort of stuff. So yeah, there's a lot of different ways that after graduating with your major, what you can do with it. So yeah, these are just some of the examples of what current students and past couple years, what we've seen students do after graduating. All right, sweet. So now we're gonna get a little bit of some quick descriptions on the engineering majors themselves. So as Christina mentioned, there is an engineering undeclared major. Uh, you are required to declare by your fourth semester and as she as christina also mentioned that it is probably better to apply uh, to a specific field of engineering that you are interested in because it can i believe it is a little more competitive to get into this un engineering undeclared major um, because it is provides that flexibility my roommate actually was an engineering undeclared major and eventually declared uh, eeks so electrical engineering computer science uh, but i do believe that it is a little more competitive so like i said it is probably good to just apply to which one, whatever one you want to do. Um, but it is possible to take an introductory seminar on the different fields of engineering to see potentially what you may be interested in and then choose from there. But like I said, it's always good to choose that specific major. 
Um, so we also have nuclear engineering. So this is focused on the research and development of different energy and radiation things. Um, it's pretty, pretty intense major, I'm sure, because it is nuclear engineering. They focus on like electrical power generation, medical isotope production. So that includes like cancer tre treatment and homeland security aspects. So there's lots of going on, lots of stuff going on there. Um, if that's interest interest to you, it is a smaller major, but I'm sure that it's very very cool as well. Um, and in addition to nuclear engineering, they off we also offer bioengineering as well, and they they focus more on the bio side of things. So it combines engineering principles and applying that to like different biological systems. Um, and bio Techno, biotech things like that. Um, so there's that that's includes like bacteria engineered to produce chemicals, medical imaging technology, tissue engineered organs. So that just gives a little taste of what that that bioengineering major offers. Um, there's definitely lots of going with things going on there, especially in the Silicon Valley with so many different biotech companies. So de there's definitely tons of opportunities there as well. Yeah, for bioengineering majors, especially right now during the pandemic, a lot of the students are helping um, in some COVID research that is happening on campus um, for testing, for different things surrounding COVID. So bioengineering students are always kind of, they're engineering students, but they um, also have a lot of the biological sciences that you'll find in the College of Letters and Science. So it's pretty good pathway um, to kind of learn both of those disciplines. We, next we have industrial engineering and operations research. This is my major. It focuses on complex systems operation and making processes more effective, efficient, and safe. So a lot of companies will hire industrial engineering students to basically come to their company um, and make it as seamless and as like kind of continuous as possible. So um, kind of, you know, making lines shorter at amusement parks, making sure that like the street lights that they line up so you don't have a red light every time like you come to like a light like that's kind of what industrial engineers do they try to make everything a little bit more efficient um, and just more effective for like the user um, we also have material science and engineering so material science and engineering is kind of a niche major um, to berkeley it focuses on desirable material properties function environmental impact feasibility cost so it focuses on testing out different materials, seeing whether you can make like this product out of a material that's cheaper or this product out of a material that's more environmentally friendly. So they don't really design new products, but they take stuff and just make it better um, by testing out different materials and looking at kind of the more like scientific or like physical aspect of it. Um, so our material science and engineering building is probably the prettiest on campus. That is the photo to your right hand side, um, Hearst, Hearst Mining Building. On the left hand side, you can also see Hearst Mining Circle that a lot of like career fairs and that sort of stuff happens in there. And then um, the upper right hand photo is actually of an um, IOR student in a lab um, doing some sort of like probably lab or like in a physics class that sort of like Kind of hands-on work so yeah there's a lot of hands-on work a lot of career fairs and like just beautiful buildings in the college of engineering all right next up we have civil and environmental engineering so this is also very focused on like data natural environments and structures so that includes like building bridges and other different like structural things um and i think another thing i want to emphasize about this major the civil and environmental engineering is the emphasis on sustainability and infrastructure. So beyond just like focusing on building bridges and building buildings, they really try to emphasize the importance of sustainability and building sustainable buildings and sustainable bridges. Uh, so I think that little tweak on the major is really interesting and makes it actually very like desirable in a way because of the modern society we do have going on. Uh, we do want things to last and to be sustainable. So it's a pretty cool emphasis to have on that major. So in the civil, civil and environmental engineering, you do get access to many different resources, including a lab construction bay in Davis Hall, where you get, where they actually tested parts of the Golden Gate Bridge and the California Highway. So it's a really, really huge space you get access to to test different structural things. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Um, and they're all inclusive. And also there's mechanical engineering next up. Uh, with this mechanical engineering is definitely more machine focused. There's many multidisciplinary projects. Um, it's like I said, it's very, focused on material and machine design and application. Uh, like Christina said, many of the engineering majors are very hands-on focused. So you're getting lots of experience, not just like reading textbooks and all that, but actually getting uh, experience to work with like many of these things, including like robotic, robotics, mechatronics, micro and nano systems, automated man manufacturing, automated transportation, 
computer mechanics and internal combustion, just like a, another quick taste of like what the mechanical engineering uh, major offers. But yeah, so I think those two majors really showcase the hands-on uh, aspect of the Berkeley campus. Yeah, so um, one of our more um, smaller departments on College of Engineering campus is the Engineering Science Department. Inside the, um, the Department of Engineering Science, we have four disciplines, and Energy Engineering, Engineering Mathematics and Statistics, Engineering Physics, and environment, environmental engineering science. Um, so these are very um, like niche majors focused around green technology, energy systems, sciences, math, bio, physics. Um, so a lot of students in these majors um, are more towards, want to have kind of a like multifaceted major where they can do a lot of research. So um, these majors specifically focus around research. They focus around kind of making your own major. So we have um, civil engineering, civil and environmental engineering, but some students really don't want that civil engineering like classes at all. They want specifically just like environmental or like um, engineering classes. So that would be one of the reasons you would pick an engineering science. Also another reason is that they are a very small community in the College of Engineering. So it's very tight knit. You really get to know your advisor very well um, because your major is so small. It's not like um, the EECS department, which we'll talk a little bit in a little bit, but that department uh, has various majors just because of how large the major is. And you may not be able to know every single person in your major or in your class. Um, but with engineering science, I know specifically, I think it was the engineering physics department is only about 50 students. So you can imagine that across all four grade levels, like students really know each other. Um, they can have mentors in their same field and be able to collaborate that way. So it's a very unique opportunity to have a very like kind of small knit community in a very large college and a very large university. Um, also great for research, also great for just um, having kind of that like interdisciplinary major that you can do a lot with after graduating. So yeah. Um, on the right hand side, you can see some pictures of um, our engineering library, um, Bechtel, which is kind of like um, on the top right hand corner, kind of the main advising center, and then our main engineering building, which is McLaughlin Hall. All right, so the last major that we will touch upon today is the EECS major, also known as Electrical Engineering and Computer Science. So it is not a double major, it is technically just one major, but there, it does focus on two different fields, so electrical engineering and computer science. Uh, focus really, it really focuses on technological problem solving, so the, a lot of the tests just are like lots of just problem solving and things like that. My, both my roommates are actually EECS uh, majors, so they, I get a little bit of a taste of what their day-to-day -day life is as EECS majors, and it is pretty intense. I will say that the major definitely is not the easiest thing. It does both of the subjects, electrical engineering and computer science, are pretty heavy subjects, but that does not mean that you should shy away from that if that's what you want to do. I think it definitely offers a lot. Um, they definitely do focus on collaboration in industry. I think collaboration as part of this major is really, really important um, for like different lab projects. You always, I think you usually try to work with a partner. So it's really big on collaboration and like meeting different people to work through these problems. Uh, there's focus on computer aided design, microwave, quantum, and optical elect electronics and circuits. So that just gives you a taste of what the major offers. Um, I think a lot of the EECS majors and like a lot of the, e the EE classes or the electrical engineering classes that I've been able to see, I haven't taken any personally. They're pretty cool. I think uh, I personally have taken many bio classes. I do like bio labs and I'm like drawing pictures of plants. Meanwhile, my friends in EE labs are like making touch screens and things like that and circuits, which seems way cooler than whatever I'm doing. But uh, I'm not I'm not a little bitter, but it's OK. Um, so I think it really does just show the, the cool things that it, the EEX major does offer, especially in the Silicon Valley with so many tech companies and so many opportunities for these uh, students that are focused on these like this tech side of the major. So I think it really does offer a lot uh, as in, in that the EEX major does offer a lot. <laughs> All right, so another important distinction that I do want to make uh, is the difference between our EECS major, electrical engineering computer science, and just a regular computer, computer science major. So the electrical engineering computer science major is in the College of Engineering, so it is slightly different than the computer science major, which is in the College of Letters and Sciences. 
which is our biggest college here on campus. So it's a little bit different. Uh, so the electrical engineering computer science major is more of uh, har hardware and software integration, while computer science is a little bit more focused on the uh, software side of things. But a benefit of the EX major is that they do offer direct admission. So if you apply to the EX major, you get into the major and you don't have to worry about declaring that major later on. Uh, meanwhile, if you come into the come into the, letter, the College of Letters and Sciences and want to do computer science, you do eventually have to take certain classes and do cert, uh, I would say fairly well in those classes to declare computer science. So it's another, what's one more thing you do have to worry about um, if you do go through the College of Letters and Sciences route, but it definitely offers a little more flexibility being a computer science major. And you do get the chance to take seven breath courses in the College of Letters and Sciences, which is a requirement for, the, for this college. I personally have had to do many of the breath courses and I found uh, them extremely helpful or really interesting. I took a class on creativity. Um, it's like, how can you even take a class on creativity? I don't know either, but I did it and it was pretty cool. So I think it really just shows that the flexibility that the College of Letters and Science office, uh, offers. Uh, but like I said, it is a little bit competitive. It is an impacted major in the College of Letters and Sciences compared to the EECS major. Um, they both are, I would say, pretty difficult, but that does not mean that you shouldn't try them out if that's what you're interested in. <laughs> Yeah, thanks, Ryan. It's always kind of confusing because we have both EECS and CS and they're in different colleges and have a lot of different requirements. Um, so you just saw another poll pop up on your screen. This is the last poll of the day. It's just asking where you're joining us from. Um, so looks like a lot of Southern California people. So you might be, or Nor Northern California and Eastern time zone. So welcome to everyone. Um, so we wanted to talk about some other opportunities other than these 11 majors that are within the College of Engineering. So aside from these 11 majors, we have joint majors. Joint majors are essentially um, kind of a pre-established program that um, eases the difficulty of trying to do a double major and trying to do it on yourself with a joint major. Uh, there, the classes are kind of like pre-set out for you. You have a specific advisor for that joint major, so you can talk to them and figure out how you're gonna take all these classes in four years. Um, so it's a great opportunity. I think right now we have a total of six joint majors. Um, so you can check out, depending if you are interested in two of the 11 majors we listed, there may be a joint major program. It is um, very kind of difficult to do two majors. And so it's this joint major program for, but if you're determined to do both of these, um, there is a program for you and you could work with advisors to kind of figure that process out. Aside from that, all of our 11 majors that we have here also have minors associated with them. So um, if you are in the College of Engineering and um, want to do like another discipline but don't wanna take on a whole other major, you can do a minor in the college. If you are in another um, over five undergraduate colleges and wanna do a minor in the College of Engineering, you can also do that. Um, we even have some minors that we didn't talk about. So. Um, the Department of Mechanical Engineering has an aerospace engineering minor. We don't have a uh, major for aerospace engineering, and that's something I was interested in, but I found out later that there's a minor for it. So if you're really interested in that, there's always a way to like pick up a minor and kind of like, you know, do mechanical engineering as a major and aerospace as a minor and do that pathway. We also have certificates. Certificates are kind of less than a minor. They're just an opportunity to expand your knowledge and take some classes outside of your major. So we have des the design innovation certificate and the entrepreneurship and technology certificate. Um, I know a little bit more about the classes and the entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship and technology certificate um, just because they overlap a lot with IOR classes. So if you're taking a major, you may want to look into a certificate. You may only have to take like two, three extra classes, and you get a certificate that basically shows you have expanded knowledge beyond your major. Um, and it can look great to companies, especially like if you wanna do entrepreneurship. An engineering major doesn't necessarily go hand in hand with entrepreneurship. Doing the certificate, you can expand beyond that by just taking a couple extra classes. And then lastly, we also have our management entrepreneurship and technology program. This is a program um, for high school seniors that are applying to Berkeley soon or anyone in high school that is thinking of applying to Berkeley. Um, it is a program where you're able to do a dual major between the College of Engineering and the Haas School of Business. So let's say a lot of you are interested in mechanical engineering today. Um, you would basically do a mechanical engineering degree while also doing um, a business administration degree in uh, the Haas School of Business at an undergraduate level. 
So it is a very competitive program. And because of that, um, usually most students apply um, like during high school and if they don't get accepted into the program, they are then, um, their application is looked at a second time just for the College of Engineering. And coming in fall 2021, continuing students in the College of Engineering will also be able to apply to that program. Um, so that's something new that's coming, but yeah. Um, you can check out their website and learn a little bit more about them and like the program itself. But it's a really cool program if you're interested in business, but also want to do engineering. Um, it is a great program to do that. Um, but even if you are a continuing student, there's other ways to get into the Haas School of Business. Um, so you can check it on their website or on our general campus tour. Yes, the MIT program is definitely pretty cool. Um, my roommate's actually in it. He has like a cool jacket from it that I want to steal one day. But uh, besides that, we have the College of Chemistry. Now the College of Chemistry is one of our smaller colleges here on campus with around a thousand students. Um, like the College of Engineering, you do want to apply directly to this college uh, because it is a little bit difficult to switch into once you're already here. Um, but it is actually ranked number one globally. Uh, yeah, I said globally, which is pretty crazy to me too. Um, so if you've been paying close attention, you may be wondering where our chemical engineering uh, major is, and it's actually housed in the College of Chemistry. So the College of Chemistry offers three different majors, chemistry, chemical biology, and chemical engineering. Uh, so there is a good amount of overlap. That's why we're mentioning uh, the College of Chemistry now uh, between the College of Engineering and the College of Chemistry. So if you are a student uh, in the College Chemical Engineering degree program, uh, you will be taking many classes in the College of Chemistry, but also in the College of Engineering. So you're going to have lots of different overlap between these two colleges. Uh, many, many colleges actually have lots of overlap between classes, which is pretty cool. But definitely the College of Chemistry is no joke. We have lots of stuff going on there. Uh, we've discovered so many, so much crazy stuff. I don't know if you know what Lewis dot structures are. They're like the cute little dot thingies. Um, but those things are also discovered in the College of Chemistry, as well as 16 elements, which is absolutely crazy. Berkelium, Californium, Laurentium, Scaborium, I haven't heard of that one, but I've heard that there are so many different elements and so much crazy stuff going in the going on in the College of Chemistry. Yeah, so even though um, chemical engineering students are not in the College of Engineering, they take probably as many engineering classes as I do. Um, and students in the College of Engineering also take chemistry classes in the College of Engineering. So talking about classes and kind of that overlap, I um, wanted to talk a little bit about what classes look like for someone in the College of Engineering. So all classes are comprised of, or most classes are comprised of lecture, section, and lab. So lecture is going to be taught by one of our renowned professors in the College of Engineering, College of Chemistry, and one of our other great undergraduate colleges. Um, so these classes are going to be, introductory classes are going to be a bit larger. So a general chemistry course is probably going to be around 400, 500 students. Um, but then a kind of like upper division IOR class is going to be 35 students. Um, but regardless of the size, they're going to be taught by one of our renowned professors. Then after your lecture, um, you're going to have section, which will be taught by an undergraduate a graduate student instructor or a GSI. Um, so a GSI is there to basically assist the professor in what they need and also just kind of um, be a kind of closer knit community to talk out like stuff that happened in lectures so in your discussion section, you're gonna take quizzes, um, you're gonna be able to ask like questions about like homework, you're gonna be able to do like practice problems on the board and kind of work it out. So that's what that time is there for. In lecture, it's more about taking notes, listening to the content, um, but in section you get to do a lot more like hands-on activities and kind of like go back. And if you didn't understand something, ask questions in a smaller setting. Sections are usually about 25 to 35 students um, at the most. I've also had sections with like 20, 15 students. So it really depends. And then for sorting courses that are a lot more hands-on, such as um, chemistry courses, physics courses, or some lab classes, like MATLAB classes, you're gonna have a lab section. These are usually also taught by graduate student instructors, and these are gonna be an opportunity um, to take what you learned in lecture, take what you just um, you were talking about in discussion, and then make a lab out of it. So in your physics lab, you're gonna actually like put together an experiment and see if it kind of lines up with what you learned. In a chemistry course, you're gonna to put together experiments and like do titrations, that sort of stuff. 
Um, so yeah, that's kind of how our classes are at Berkeley for engineering students and really any sort of STEM student. We also have office hours for all of our professors and graduate student instructors. So depending on who you're more comfortable going to office hours with, right now we have a bunch of virtual office hours. You just jump on a Zoom call with them. Feel free to ask them like as many questions as you want and they're there to help you. Um, it's an allotted time they have every week to just meet with students and they're always, um, I know a lot of my professors are always like, come to office hours, come to office hours during class. So they really want to talk to students and help them throughout their semester in their class. Um, I already talked a little bit about class size, but it is dependent on major. Um, as you saw in the pie chart, nuclear engineering students being our smallest department in the College of Engineering are probably going to have a um, tiny bit smaller classes than electrical engineering computer science students, um, just because we want to facilitate to make sure all students are able to get into the classes they want to take and they need to take to graduate. Um, so yeah, they're going to be dependent on major. They're also going to be dependent on your year. So first year students are usually going to have those like 400, 500 like people classes, but seniors are going to have like 30 person classes. So it's going to be very dependent. Also during your first year, you might have a 30 person class. You never know. Um, so it's also going to be dependent on how many students are taking that class that semester. Um, we have in, in when we have in-person classes, we have eye clickers and in-class interaction to talk to the people around you and interact with the professor and what you've been learning during lecture. Um, during Zoom, we have like polls, we have other stuff um, just to make sure that students are kind of like being interactive throughout the lecture, especially on Zoom, where it's a little bit easier to kind of just zone out and like stray away from your computer. Um, they're trying to make it as interactive as possible. So that's something really important and something um, we're very proud of here at Berkeley. Um, some resources for classes and like any academic help you need. We have the Student Learning Center, which is for all students on campus. It's basically kind of our main tutoring center um, where we have undergraduate students tutoring other students. Engineering Student Services is also a great place. We have our own tutoring center for specifically engineering classes. Um, and those are also undergraduate students helping out other um, undergraduate students through their four years here. And then we have four year academic advisors in the College of Engineering. So your advisor is going to be with you from your first day at school till graduation if you don't change majors and they will be there to assist you with anything you need. They are in Bechtel and right now all advising is online and you're able to just set up a Zoom call with them and meet up with them and ask questions um, and really just work alongside them. So yeah, on the right hand side, you can see um, the top right hand picture is Pimento Hall where general chemistry class is held. You can see some um, graduate student instructors, I'm assuming, kind of like preparing lab for students and then how some of the buildings look around campus as well. All right, sweet. Thanks, Christina. So now we're going to get, uh, we're going to touch student diversity a little bit. Um, so as a student in the College of Engineering, it can be a little bit overwhelming. Um, sorry a little bit overwhelming as a student with just so much going on and there's so many people to meet so uh, there are many diff different uh, organizations that can help students feel uh, included in these in the college of engineering these include different uh, societies such as women in science and engineering theme programs black engineering and science student associations hispanic engineers and scientists eop stem and the pre-engineering program just to give you a little bit of an overview of what the college of engineering offers in terms of inclusivity and different programs to make students feel um, included and really at home at this new scary place. Yeah, so also with that, we also have club and competition teams to also get involved and kind of find your community. So um, you can see them listed right here, Calcel, Calcel Bridge, Bridge Team, Society of Women Engineers, and just a bunch of clubs on campus. Um, so on the upper left hand corner, you can see some of our students in a canoe. That's actually a canoe that they made out of concrete. A lot of our material science and mechanical engineering students um, make these concrete canoes um, throughout their semester and they figure out how to make concrete float, which is just amazing. And that's what they learn in class and they put it together in a club setting and like make friends through it and like go up to Tahoe and have a great time. Um, you can also see um, our solar like car team on the bottom left hand corner. Um, top right corner is our like aerospace team where they kind of work on that 
they have a minor and they really like are a very tight knit community. You can also see just a bunch of students and what they do on campus and like what they're passionate about. Um, all right, so now to touch uh, research. Here at Berkeley, we have many different research opportunities for students here on campus. Um, so that includes the Undergraduate Research Apprenticeship Program, which I actually am a part of. So the URAP program encompasses many different uh, aspects of research that you can go into. So that includes like, if you wanna go into research into history or sciences. So if you wanna do research engineering as well, they definitely have many different research projects for that. So I actually am part of two URAP projects. And, and in addition to that, there's also the Beehive uh, system so that in, that connects engineering students to, to many different research projects similar to the URAP program and there's also many different opportunities at the Lawrence Berkeley National Lab so it's a national lab that's really located just up the hill from Berkeley campus so it, it's a free bus ride away from uh, the Berkeley campus so it's really accessible and it offers many different opportunities to work with uh, crazy faculty that are doing amazing stuff and then also including that, there's also the Sutarja Center for Entrepreneurship and Technology. And so that also is just another opportunity for to get involved with, with that. And in, in addition to that, there's also the Collider Cup, which is a competition for students to come up with different ideas uh, to help progress society. And including, and in addition to that, there's also undergrad and professional programs for research. Yeah, and then lastly, to end off our tour, just wanted to talk a little bit about some notable figures and alumni um, from the College of Engineering. So we have Rube Goldberg, um, which if you've ever done in elementary or middle school, kind of those like complex, like setting up a bunch of stuff to do like a minuscule task. That is kind of what Rube Goldberg is known for. He was an engineer, a cartoonist, and a complex machine inventor. Kind of the opposite of industrial engineering and operations research. I like to put in the least amount of work to get a product, but he just kind of did the opposite of that and did all these steps to do kind of a minuscule task. Um, then our Dean of the College of Engineering, Dean Liu, um, she is a great instructor, researcher, and administrator, and now Dean of the school. She's the first um, female Dean of the College of Engineering, and there's not a lot of female deans in other engineering colleges, so we're really um, proud to have women at the forefront of um, our administration on campus and she um, has won various prizes and is just very well known in the engineering field. Then we have Shafi Goldwasser which won the Turing Prize. Uh, the Turing Prize is a kind of like one of the top prizes you can get in the computer science um, field, um, kind of similar to a Nobel Prize and um, she did amazing research and amazing work um, in in computer science, and she is just one of our very esteemed alumni. Um, Steve Wozniak, which probably I think most of us have an iPhone, a MacBook, or some sort of Apple product. So he was a co-founder of Apple um, and is just very well known for that, but he also just did so much. And we even have a space on campus called Wozniak Lounge um, to kind of like commemorate him and what a great alumni he is. Um, of the Berkeley College of Engineering. And then lastly, uh, we have our celebration of 150 years of women on campus. And it's also been 150 years of women in engineering. So women aren't usually at the like forefront of engineering, but UC Berkeley um, admitted um, women into the engineering college as soon as admitted ad women into campus. So something we're really proud of and hope to continue um, legacy of women on campus um, in the College of Engineering. Thank you both Christina and Ryan for that presentation. We're just gonna go ahead um, and head into Q&A now. So a lot of our questions are going to be related to some that were in the Q&A, um, but they will be kind of more general. Uh, so the first question we have is for Ryan. How is Berkeley handling more of the hands-on collaborative classes during this time um, over Zoom? What is it like learning over Zoom? And yeah, if you could touch on that for a little bit. Um, just initially, I do think that learning over Zoom is definitely a lot different. Um, it's definitely something to get used to. I think one of the biggest troubles that I think I've had with being on Zoom is staying engaged. But I do think that many professors have adapted their classes and things like that to make sure 
that students are staying engaged in this uh, online domain, which is completely different. Um, I personally don't have much experience with like engineering classes online, but many of my classes that I have had online, including like biology labs and physics labs, like things like that, um, like they have made many different accommodations for this online setting. So that includes like videotaping certain lab procedures or having online modules that are still pretty interesting. So I actually got to do like sequence the gene online, things like that. So they definitely have made different, many different adaptations to this online setting. I can't say that it's exactly the same, but I do, I do think that many professors are trying to try their best to make sure that students are engaged with the material because it can be a little bit hard just and feel distant being on this online world. And Christina, you can add on anything if you'd like. Yeah, so kind of with Ryan, um, I think they're doing a lot for especially for hands on classes. I know for certain classes, not mine specifically, but friends I have in the College of Engineering or STEM courses have been basically sent like a huge lab kit to their houses or wherever they are. Um, and they're able to work on labs doing that. I know for like freshman students, um, they um, kind of transform like the general chemistry classes to make sure that they were able to do all the experiments with just like items you would find at home or like in your pantry. So that's something they're doing. Um, and then also I know one thing that UC Berkeley is doing is making classes that make up um, this program called Semester in the Cloud. So there's a lot of um, kind of general like classes in there such as I think like Data 8 or maybe some of the like intro CS classes um, that a lot of engineers take and they're the semester in the cloud is really different than other Zoom classes at other universities is instead of being an in-person class that was moved to Zoom, it is an entirely like built from the bottom up like online class. Um, so it's not like getting used to making this into a virtual format. It's already in a virtual format. Um, and I've, ha I've heard really good stuff from people who are taking the semester in the cloud courses. So that's going to be a lot for like um, first year, second year students in the College of Engineering. Definitely. Um, I agree with you both. I'm actually a undergraduate student instructor for Data8 and from everything to creating our labs, making sure that the Jupyter notebooks that students are coding on are extremely clear and to make sure that we are being a little more empathetic, especially during these times we have pedagogy training, we have inclusivity training. Uh, so it's everything that we can do to really make sure that students are feeling supported and getting the resources that they need. Awesome. Okay, so our next question is for Christina, and I see some questions coming up in the Q&A that I'm going to kind of relate to this. Um, what are some popular engineering extracurriculars at Berkeley, and am I able to, let's say, start our own club? How difficult would that be? Um, so yeah. Yeah, so I think some of the, we touched upon some of the most popular um, clubs in engineering during our tour. Um, Society of Women Engineers is like a huge club of men and it's like 500 girls in that club out of like the college, which is like basically like, I don't know, like probably like 20, 15 percent of the college is is or has been involved in that club. Um, I also know that a lot of our competition teams are super popular just because you're able to take what you learn in the classroom and have fun with it and be experimental with it and like make great friendships out of it. So like you're able to have fun while like putting stuff on your resume like hey I made this steel bridge and I went to nationals and we won like stuff like that just shows like that you're able to use what you learned in class and make a community out of it and then just make like something so much like greater than yourself out of it so I think those are really popular um but there's also for every basically like major or some sort of like honor society or there's some sort of club. So for like industrial engineering students, I know there's a club that just focuses around that. So they'll help um, like find resources, they'll do like club fairs specifically for your major. So those are really popular for students, especially like once you get into your third, fourth year and are looking for internships um, or mentors in your field, those are great. Um, and yeah, if there is a club that, you know, isn't part of the Berkeley campus, you're able to make it. Like one great example of just like students kind of like pushing for what they want is like the, our aerospace club. We don't have an air. When I entered UC Berkeley, we didn't even have an aerospace minor. We basically had nothing. Um, but there is such a like kind of need for it. And so many students wanted that, that they started a club. And like now they even pushed for a minor just because of how many students were interested. So yeah, 
even if it's not engineering related, like whatever your like niche is or, or whatever your interest is, we have over a thousand student registered organizations. And even if you don't find your community in those, like you can make your own club, you can like go to our student government and get funding for that club. So yeah, UC Berkeley kind of gives you all the resources to be able to do that. Cool, definitely. And I also saw in the Q&A that there was stuff about having um, your own entrepreneurial ideas, or maybe you have an idea for like a startup or something like that. We have startup accelerators um, close to Berkeley as well. Um, and those are really great things to be a part of. And some of them are actually linked to UC Berkeley. I know people who have gotten internships there um, and have been able to create and really uh, start like their own innovative ideas. All right, our next question, I feel like the both of you can answer because you could both have different perspectives on this, um, but how's the workload in UC Berkeley engineering programs or in UC Berkeley in general? And how do you manage that workload and try to get that balance of academic and social life? So Ryan, we can have you go first for this one. All right, sweet. Um, so I think just time management and like managing different workloads, is definitely something that you kind of learn by doing, or, or so to say, um, when I first came here, I, well, I can't really speak on the engineering side because I am not an engineer, but in my personal experience, um, when I first came here, I took the least amount of units you can take just, and I like didn't really do anything. I kind of just hung out with friends, just like ate at the, the dining hall just to get a feel for things. And I think that was a really good like transition period for me from coming from high school. I did a lot in high school, but I think just like it was nice to just get my bearings. Um, so I think just having that like experience under my belt of like not doing much was nice and then every semester or so I've been really increasing the amount of things I'm doing uh, now I'm taking I was at like 21 units which is absolutely insane so I dropped a class but so that's a lot of lot of units now and I'm doing a lot of other stuff on this on the side so I think it just shows that um, just like time management things like that really do come with just slowly increasing and knowing where your limits are I do think that people's limits do differ and that's really important to know your limits because you don't want to go like insane or go, go crazy because I have seen that too but I think just really managing your time and really prioritizing things that you want to do and not things that you feel you need to do so I think uh, creating that distinction is really important so that you're not feel like you're wasting your time on anything or something like that so I think really just just trying different things out seeing what you're interested in is really important um, college is a very unique time user uh, saturated with so much like things going on so I, but I think just having that opportunity is really crazy and really unique in that sense and really valuable so I think I think really just managing your time is something that you learn by doing and it's a big skill that I've learned in my three years here so far Christina yeah so kind of I kind of did the same thing as Ryan my first semester I took very few units I think I took 13 units which is um, like slightly on the lower end for students, but I think for your first semester, it's really smart to just do that because the transition from high school to college is just really drastic. Um, and like, I like didn't know what I was getting into. So that really helped me and saved me. Um, but yeah, the College of Engineering has a minimum of 12 units per semester and a maximum of 22. Um, so those are kind of the bounds you're able to be in um, without like getting advisor approval. That's 10 units is a really big difference. So for every student, it's going to depend if you have a lot of extracurriculars, if you are a student athlete, if you have a lot more going on, then you're probably going to stray closer to like the 12, 13, 14 units. But there are students that um, are able to handle that like Ryan like 21 units and I don't know how you do it. I could never but there's students that can do that um, especially students who are like looking towards double majors stuff like that um, that can push themselves to that limit. One thing to keep in mind um, advisors as I said we have four-year academic advisors in the College of Engineering so it's really good to just talk to them and ask them like hey this is what I'm looking for schedule and they um, they kind of know what other students have taken they can kind of like give you some advice because it may be okay to take like 18 units 20 units a semester but if those are all technical courses that's going to be a lot so each class is going to be different in how much of a workload it is so always good to talk to advisors talk to people who have already taken the class there's like berkeley time which is like um students have made and student government have made like this website where you can kind of find out like distribution of class grades all of that so there's a bunch of resources but yeah as Ryan said it depends on you and depends like how much other stuff you're doing and then also what classes you're taking and whether those are technical 
um, or they're more like kind of breath classes. Exactly. Um, I like how I was laughing at Ryan, but I'm actually taking, I'm taking 21 units this semester, but like Christina said, you need to be able to balance it so that it's not all technical and that you make sure that, you know, a lot of people, well, they start, they go right into college and they think that like taking all the computer science classes and all of those introductory technical classes right off the bat um, so that they can get over with, but make sure that you are balancing things out um, and talking to your advisors. Super important, I feel like, is also to just make that four-year plan beforehand because sometimes you have classes that might not be available at the time that you want them um, and then you'll have to be flexible and try to uh, get other classes that you need. Okay, last question before we go into our second to last question is going to be um, about jobs and careers. So I know there are some questions about what um, students within EECS can go into after they graduate, but I feel like more general question and we can have Christina go for this one is what kind of jobs can students in the engineering field go into and how does UC Berkeley support students in finding those after they graduate? Yeah, so for engineering students, it's going to really depend on your major. So um, electrical engineering and computer science students, for example, usually those students right after graduating, most don't go to grad school, I found, or at least at UC Berkeley. Um, they go really straight into industry. We're near Silicon Valley and there's like um, kind of a really like large like kind of need for those type of students in those sort of majors. So usually they're good without doing like masters or PhD stuff like that. Um, for other students, such as like in the engineering sciences department, a lot of them go into research, as I said. So that's another pathway that students go into. And then kind of everywhere else in the middle, a lot of students will go to grad school, but the type of jobs, most jobs um, that I found that students do, they usually just find through career fair. So um, UC Berkeley has a career center that helps with students like resume building, interviews. They like have so many resources and they're just um, such as like a lot of people don't go to the career center, but it's just such a good resource to have. Um, but aside from the career center, the College of Engineering also does um, department specific career fairs. So those can be a little bit less intimidating than going to career fair where like it's just everyone like and, and everyone like they'll have an industrial engineering and operations research like specific career fair. And those are like kind of companies that are specifically looking towards you and I encourage all students to go there because it may be intimidating, but the reason those companies are there um, is to like look for you like they want like, you know, when you graduate for you to come to their company and make it better. Um, so yeah, career fairs are a great one, uh, career center. Um, but yeah, I think most students in the College of Engineering usually go straight to industry and straight to working for like some sort of company in Silicon Valley or some sort of like just like tech slash STEM company. Yeah, and it's really cool. I think how clubs, they like specifically help to run those career fairs. So they partner with different companies and have them come over. I mean, even as like a sociology major, I still get emails from the career center saying, here are some like non-tech roles in tech that you can look into, even if that wasn't the traditional pathway that you thought about before. Um, cool, let's just go into our last question now. I have the pleasure of asking our tour givers their Berkeley story. So our last question is basically, why Berkeley? Why did you decide to make Berkeley your home? Um, let's have Ryan go first and then Christina go next. All right, um, so when I first was like applying to colleges, I wasn't really sure like what I was like looking for or really wanted in a school. Um, I think I was really attracted to Berkeley for like its rigor, its like reputation, things like that. Um, but I wasn't really sure like why I wanted to go here. Um, I still applied and then I actually didn't get in. I was waitlisted. So there's one thing that you do take out of this. I will say is that if you are waitlisted, don't give up. I think that's one of the biggest things that I wish I like would had more of a positive mindset towards. I kind of just gave up like oh, I'm waitlisted. I'm not going to get in. I submitted my waitlist like essay thing and then I eventually got in and I was super hyped, super like super, yeah, super hyped. And I eventually visited the school. And I think many of like my initial like desire to go here was confirmed. I think just talking to the individuals on the campus and like seeing the Campanile, the big clock tower, um, just seeing the entire campus, it's really, really beautiful. I think if you can just go visit, um, if you can, it's quite um, my, like the best thing about the school is the campus. So I think just seeing the campus for the first time, it was just really like almost like awestruck for, what, for a little bit. And I was like, wow, I get a chance to be here. So I think after those initial feelings, I came here and I was like even more awestruck just by meeting the different people and things like that. And I think it really provides a positive and like motivating, um, just like mindset in a, in a sense that I think I've really driven myself to like do things that I never thought I would be able to do, like taking 21 units, 
for a little bit. That was crazy. I eventually dropped that, but I think it's good to know your limits. But I think, so I think just really showing that I can grow and like I can do things that I didn't know I could do. So I'm really just proud of the amount I've grown in over the past three years. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah, I, I agree. I was also waitlisted. So don't give up if you are waitlisted. Even um, write the essay if you are waitlisted, because that's definitely a great place to show Berkeley your own strengths and why you want to go there. And last but not least, Christina. Yeah, so I had not known a lot about Berkeley when I was going through like basically this timeline when you're like looking at different colleges and like figuring out which I'm which am I going to apply to like um, you know, kind of that sort of thing. I knew I wanted to do engineering, so I just kind of looked up a lot of renowned engineering schools, came upon Berkeley, um, just because it's kind of like at the top of the ranking, so it caught my eye, and looked a little bit more into it, um, and it just kind of amazed me. They're kind of at the forefront of everything, like research. They're a public university. They're in California, so it kind of made sense for me, being from Southern California. It's far enough away from home where I can get away, but also like close enough to home where I have in-state tuition, where I can like still go back home if I need to, like one hour flight. Um, but yeah, so that's why I decided to apply. Found out in March, um, I was accepted to like College of Engineering and Berkeley. So I was really pumped. Um, and I visited um, Cal on this day called Cal Day, which is basically an open house for all students, alumni, um, prospective students and it's just basically like a big like party of everything Cal um, and I visited the school I took a couple tours I went to the um, engineering offices talked to some people there and really the people I met were just like amazing and were just like the greatest and also um, just like the spirit on campus I'm a very like love the academics of Berkeley but one of the things that like convinced me overall was just the spirit that was on campus and like how much passion people had, like even if they weren't in like spirit, they were just so passionate about what they wanted to do, especially in the College of Engineering. Everyone is so passionate about what they want to do, what apps they've made, like everything they've done. Um, so yeah, that's what kind of convinced me. And like after Cal Day, I just loved it so much. I was like, okay, I'm an SIR. I'm not sure if that's what it's still called, but basically like accept your admission. Um, and yeah, so that's kind of what made it. So it was admissions at like, kind of like academics and stuff at first, but also the people here, the community and the spirit is just like amazing. Definitely. I agree that Berkeley is like not just the best. I think we talk about like best of both worlds, but it's like the best of all worlds. There's so many different aspects to it that make it amazing. Um, so unfortunately this, this does mark the end of our engineering tour today. Please follow us on social media at visit UC Berkeley on Instagram and Twitter. You can also email tour at berkeley.edu if you do not get all of your questions answered and a student ambassador will answer your question for you. Uh, we also have a blog. Um, this blog is where student perspectives, you can see a lot of other perspectives of students like Christina and Ryan at beartalk.berkeley.edu. Uh, again, if you missed any part of this for any reason, no worries. There's a different recorded one on our YouTube channel at Visit UC Berkeley. If you want to see how UC Berkeley is helping our students during the fall semester, as well as our COVID-19 resources, you can visit coronavirus.berkeley.edu. And as Christina said, we are celebrating 150 years of women. So please go to 150w.berkeley.edu to see all of the wonderful virtual events that we have planned. Uh, you can also learn more about engineering at engineering.berkeley.edu. And finally, our last link, visit.berkeley.edu, will take you to all of the student panels and general virtual visits that we have throughout um, for Berkeley. So thank you so much again for being here. I want to um, have our ambassadors end this tour with a big Go Bears on three. So one, two, three. Go, Go Bears! Bears. <laughs> Thanks, everyone.